Hey, my Rec Tech family, thank you guys so much for watching this. Uh, I realize the video is extremely long. It covers a lot of information from the high lift hinge to the hopper brace to installing the side shelf, how everything comes packaged. You know, I'll try to timestamp down at the bottom just in case you don't want to watch the whole thing. You can jump to the section that, that pertains to you. Uh, also, just want to let everyone know before this video is over, make sure you hit that like and subscribe and turn on that bell. Uh, because this video is going up. I'm also announcing that we're going to be launching the high lift hinge again on my Shopify uh, at the end of this video at www.drgcustomcarts.com uh, Make sure you head over there and get those. I've had a lot of people asking for them That was the whole reason why I jumped on to try to knock out 50 of these um, So they're already done boxed up ready to go out if you purchase them tonight They will actually ship out tomorrow so you may even be able to get them before Christmas, be able to start rolling some smoke on your bullseye, doing some rotisseries, uh, or even cooking something on the matador. So make sure you check those out. I also wanted to let everyone know that's on the interest list and all that. I know, uh, you know, I've seen the comments on Facebook. I know everybody's wondering where they're sitting, when these are going out. There were 20 that I had to do before I started the interest list. Uh, and a bunch of them were specialty carts. One of them in particular is very important. It was an incredible cart. It shipped out last week along with $10. Um, the gentleman that's getting it, it's actually for his son. I don't want to say any more about it until after they get it and unbox it. It was a pleasure to build this one. I had a lot of fun doing it. I hope the young man absolutely loves it. The father's going to do a video when he gets it to, and then send that video over to me. I'm going to try to incorporate that in my next video, which will probably be the last video uh, for the year. Um, just let everyone know there should be probably five to ten carts actually going out this week. Uh, they're already cut out. The frames are done and powder coated. All I have to do is powder coat the skins, pre-assemble them, make sure everything works good. I'm actually in the process of trying to work out something with FedEx to get shipping done to where these can actually be shipped to you already assembled. Uh, it makes boxing them a lot easier. It makes shipping them a lot easier, but it does it is more costly uh, So that's what I'm trying to work out to try to get that done for you guys So please bear with me, you know, we will get these done. I did get some bad information the um, Special piece of equipment that I ordered two months ago that they told me would be in in two months It looks like due to COVID and all that it actually got pushed back because this has to go through customs and you know it, it's, it's a whole mess it looks like I may not even get that uh, piece of equipment until probably February. Um, so I'm really disappointed about that. I was really looking forward to this helping me speed up my productivity and get, get these carts out a lot faster. Uh, but please, hang in there. Bear with me. I promise you, you will not be disappointed when you get them. So let's get on to the video. It's already long enough. So as always, my friends, I'll see you on our next build. Hey, my Rec Tech family, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I realize the video is extremely lengthy. It's got a lot of material I needed to try to cover. You know, this is probably going to be, I only have one video left to do before the end of the year. That's going to be for a unveil of a very special cart that I built for a young man. Uh, he should actually get that on Tuesday. I can't wait to share that build with you guys. I want to cover the interest list that we have going, the individuals that got in on the uh, combo set that I did last month. Also, I wanted to address issues or questions that I was getting in reference to the hopper brace that I come up with for the bullseye. Also, the high lift hinge. What's it for? Why would I need one? Um, also, the install of the side shelf, the new design uh, fold away side shelf that I made for the bullseye. You know, here in my shop, I very rarely actually get an opportunity to actually do hands on with a full setup. But it just so happens with Christmas being right around the corner, I had like 10 specialty carts that I had to build that were pre-purchased months ago. 
And these individuals really wanted these for Christmas to give to their family members for Christmas presents. I just finished up the last one last week and shipped it out. I do have one left in the shop that has not been picked up yet. But this particular cart, luckily for me, they're actually getting everything. So they're getting the hopper brace, the side shelf, the high lift hinge. So this was a perfect opportunity for me to do a video to show everybody, first off, how the brace works for the hopper, how the high lift hinge works, why you would need one, and why it's a really good thing to be able to take your bowls out to the absolute next level, and also how to install the fold away side shelf and how convenient and easy it works. So that's why I wanted to do this video really quick, just to show everybody. So. Like I said, I realize this is a very lengthy video. We're gonna to try to jump right in with both feet. So let's get to it. And I think the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the hopper brace onto this grill. Okay, so as you can see here, we have one of my new V3 competition carts, the ones that was done with everything chrome so it would kind of match the stainless steel bullseye. Um, when you purchase the stainless steel bullseye, it comes on a cart that the cart really weighs probably all together, probably about three or four pounds. Um, now, when you have it in that configuration, the hopper handle, the handle that's actually attached to your hopper, Rectech redesigned this after their very first um, launch of the bullseye because the handle used to be a lot shorter, but then there were people that was complaining that it was too hard to get to the lock to unlock the hopper box. So Rectech, being a company that constantly listens to the people and tries to upgrade their products regularly, they went to the drawing board and they actually lengthened the handle and made it longer to make access to that flipper a lot easier. Now, like I said, under normal circumstances, under the configuration that it was designed to be in, that is absolutely fine. You have no worries with that, no problems. It will last you a lifetime. But when you add it to one of my carts, which weighs close to 55 pounds, you get a lot of flex out of the handle. As you can notice here, if you watch this handle, when you try to lift up on it, the handle has a lot of flex in it. So I was afraid that over time, being on one of my carts, you would actually start to chip your powder coat off. And I didn't want that to happen. So I designed a very simple, very easy to install brace that actually attaches this to the hopper box. You literally have to remove two Phillips screws and put them right back in and all that flex will be completely gone. So let's go up close. I'll show you exactly step by step how to do it. So hold tight. We'll be right back. Okay. So when you order one of the hopper braces for your bullseye, it's going to come like this. It comes in a USPS flat rate box. When you open it up, you're going to have the handle with the brace. Now this is Rectech's original handle. Actually has Rectech in it. This is a, a quality part. It's gonna have my powder coated high gloss black brace. And you're gonna have the instructions telling you how to install it. Hopefully I'm not gonna need the instructions today. So this is so simple to install. Now, the absolute best thing you could use to install this, because all you have to do is remove two Phillips screws and then put those two screws literally right back and you are done. So when it comes like this, peel the tape off and you're gonna notice that the handle comes apart in two pieces. You have the top which says Rectech grills on it and you have the back which has the grippers so you can lift it and the screw goes right through the center. Now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but you're gonna notice that the hinge, the back part actually has a nipple that sticks up. And when you slide this up in the bottom, that should actually lock over that nipple. Okay, so I don't know if you could see that. Now, to install it, your absolute best friend is gonna be what's called a stubby Phillips screwdriver. It's a very short, about two and a half inch long. But if you don't have one of those, almost every one of us has one of these screwdrivers, which is the bent Phillips screwdriver that came with your grill so that you could put the bolts on the hopper brace and the handles. If you have this, that's all you need, okay? So we're gonna go up close. I'll show you exactly what to remove, how to do it. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Okay, 
Right here in the handle, you'll notice in the back, there is actually a Phillips screw right in the middle. Use the little screwdriver that came with your kit and just unscrew that screw. The handle is actually gonna come apart. Now you're not gonna need this handle again, but don't throw it away only because this handle is exactly the same as the one that's on your lid. They're both identical. So if anything ever happens to the one on your lid, it gets melted or discolored over time, you'll have a replacement handle to put on that lid. You are gonna need to reuse the screw that came out of it, okay? So set that aside and I'll show you the other screw you have to remove. Okay, so on the end of the hopper, directly below the handle, the, the Phillips screw that is dead center, remove that screw. All right, and you're also going to reuse that screw as well. All right, you're going to notice that the two screws are two different sizes. You're going to notice that one is short, one is long. The long one is the one that goes through the plastic handle. The short one goes back into the bottom of the hopper. Okay, so what you're going to do is take the handle apart, set the back up over the metal handle, put the front on, make sure you have Rectech sitting the right way, which is engraved in the front. I've done that a couple times, put it on upside down, had to take it back off. Take the long screw, put it through the back, and tighten it up. All right, once you got that tight, then you're gonna take the little screw and you're gonna put it right back through the bottom of the brace, right back into the hopper where it was before. And just snug it down and now you're done. You now have the hopper brace installed and there is no flex on the handle at all. It's that simple. Now you have reinforced it. No more fears that your powder coat's gonna chip. Everything is solid as a rock the way it should be. All right, so now let's move on to our next project. Okay, so here we are at the grill. You're gonna notice if you have any, if you have one of the new V2 or V3 competition carts, and you're gonna notice that under the word bullseye on the A-frame, there have actually been two stainless steel bolts already installed, shipped with the cart. Those are there so that you could add the fold up shelf on the side later if you wanted to. So right now what you could do is remove those two bolts, take your brace that is on the support bar that came with your shelf, and you're going to install it at this location. And the way the hinge goes on is it goes on with this aiming up in the air. So don't put it on like this. It goes on this direction, okay? So install that. Just tighten it down. Just like that. Now your bottom brace has been installed. Now you're gonna take your template that came to show you where to mark the holes for the hinge for the shelf. And you're gonna notice on one end of it, it actually says hinge with arrows. This is where I suggest you take a little piece of tape, put it on the end, and slide this edge up against the hinge, keeping the top of it up against the bottom lip. So slide it up till it touches the hinge, tape it to the hinge just to hold it there in place, making sure it stays up. Put another piece of tape on this side just to hold your template in place. 
all right? Just like that. So you're gonna make sure this end is up against the hinge, this end is taped to it, and that it's pushed all the way up so that it's hitting against the bottom lip. And then right here, you're gonna notice there are three 5 16 holes that are marked for you to drill, all right? Now what I suggest you do, let me spin this around so you can see it. What I suggest is use a 5 30 seconds drill bit and drill dead center of the circles. That's gonna be a very small drill bit that you're gonna use as a guide. So drill those three holes. Now you can actually remove your template off of the grill. You now have your three guide holes set for your hinge. Now use the 5 16 drill bit. Now clean off any of the debris metal. I would suggest being very careful here. I like to use my knife just to clean off any metal. You could use a reamer if you have one. If you don't, just use an old kitchen knife, but don't use your wife's good one or she's gonna kill you and I don't wanna be responsible for that. All right, now that you have your three holes drilled, you're gonna take your hinge and you're going to remove the three stainless steel screws. Just screw them out. All right, and then just hold it up to those holes. Start the screws in the back. Now with your hinge all attached, you're gonna take the shelf, hold it up against the hinge, and you're gonna insert your aluminum pin. Like that. And then you're going to install your cotter key. And now, Technically, your shelf is installed. All we have to do now is to attach the lower support bracket. All right, so let me show you how to do that. Okay, so now you're gonna take your support bracket. You're gonna notice in one end, it has an insert that is threaded. The other end just has a rubber cap. On the end that's threaded, you're going to screw this onto the T-bolt that is on the bottom of the shelf. All right, so just screw it in and screw it all the way up. Don't do it tight, just screw it all the way up till it stops like there, okay? Now, you're gonna lift up on the shelf and you're going to take the brace and set it over the side into the bracket on the bottom. So let me show you that. Okay, with your bottom bracket installed, you're gonna raise up on the shelf and you're going to set the support bar over the side and into the saddle. Don't try to raise the shelf up far enough to get it over the brace. Go in from the side, set it in there so it's in that position, all right? 
Okay, now that you have the bottom brace set into the saddle the way it goes, you may notice by looking at the video that the shelf is actually going downhill. So it needs to be adjusted up to get it level. This is part of the reason why I come up with the new design so that you would be able to actually raise this up and down to get the table absolutely level. So what I recommend, what I normally do is I'll put a straight edge across the top of the grill and you can see just how far off the shelf is. All right. So what I do is pick up on the shelf and unspin the bottom support bar, put it back, still needs to go up, keep spinning it. Still needs to go up. And there you can see it is perfectly level under. Now it's perfect. Now I don't pin with the pin. I don't pin the bar. I put an ear on this bottom brace so that you could lock your pin in there just so you could keep track of it. But the only reason that was done was for the competition guys that are pulling these in and out of trailers. It's to keep the shelf from bouncing around and maybe jumping out of the saddle. The only reason I don't pin it at, at home is because you only have the shelf up while you're cooking. And when you're done cooking and then later that evening you want to cover the grill up, you don't want to have to keep bending down and taking the pin out, putting it back in. So that's why the bottom bracket was designed as a saddle for this shelf to actually sit in. So there's no way for it to go anywhere. And without the pin in it, when you're done, all you have to do is raise up on it, lift it out and lay the shelf down. And now you can put your cover on. That simple, you want the shelf up, that quick you have your side shelf. All right, I hope that was informative. I hope that helped anyone. If you have any problems with it, please, Make sure you go back and watch the video again. If I haven't covered something, please let me know. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the next one. All right, so for everyone out there that was asking the other day, why do I need one of your hinges for the bullseye? Is this a necessity that I have to have? My answer to you is absolutely not. You do not need this hinge to use the bullseye, to enjoy it, to cook some amazing food on it. But if you want to take the bullseye to the next level and you want the bullseye to accommodate the Weber 2290 rotisserie or you want to run Rectex Matador skillet on it, let me show you exactly why you're really going to want to pick up one of these hinges. Um, so let me just show you how it works. Okay, so when you purchase the hinge, it's going to come, the new model hinge actually has an S cut in the back of it, which is for stainless. Uh, this is not made out of stainless. This is made out of 14 gauge hot rolled steel, welded reinforced L bracket on the back. Um, a lot of time went into designing this. That's why I couldn't release them. Uh, you know, the earliest I could was last week. I launched 10 of them. I now have 50 of them that's going up tonight for sale. Um, I wanted them to fit perfectly. And unbeknownst to me, you know, RecTech is an amazing company. And they constantly listen to people, they listen to your feedback, they listen to your complaints. They are constantly tweaking every product that they make. Every time they get new batches of them, if there was an issue or there was something that you guys thought was gonna be better or more efficient or whatever, RecTech takes all that into account. And a lot of times they modify the, the grill itself to make it just a step better. And a lot of times you don't even notice it but me with being in the fabricating industry and I have to build products that'll actually work with theirs, a lot of times I have to go back to the drawing board and retweak mine as well to make them accommodate it. And that's why there has been four models of this hinge. This is the latest one and this hinge as it is right now, it is only designed to work with the new stainless steel bullseyes, but it will work with the beta version. So, let me show you exactly what you got to do, how simple this is once you set up your grill to go from original setup 
to putting the Matador on it, to putting the rotisserie on it, and then going back to stock. Okay, so as soon as you get to hinge, the very first thing that I recommend that I actually describe in the directions is you're gonna notice on the hinge that you put on, there is one guide pin that goes through the clamshell. Remove that off of the grill. So first thing you're gonna do is take two Phillips screwdrivers, you're gonna loosen up the Phillips screw, and you're going to remove the factory pin. All right, the factory pin you will never use again. All right, so put this somewhere safe, put it up somewhere where you won't lose it, but you're never going to use it again because as soon as you get the high lift hinge, you're going to remove that and you're going to install one of my pins and put the clip on it. And now you're right back to using it in its factory setup state. But that makes it so much simpler when you go out and you want to put the hinge on. You don't need any tools. All you're going to do is you're going to pull the pin. You're going to, well, let me walk you through it and I'll show you exactly why this hinge is a must have. So let's take a look. So let's just say that you're deciding that today you want to deep fry some fish and you want to use the Matador skillet and you want to put it on your bullseye. Well, all you're going to do is if you decided to use Rectex Matador skillet, as you can see, it fits right in the bullseye perfectly. The handles are designed where they actually set on the lip and hold it. The only problem you have is if you try to close the lid, the lid doesn't close. So if you're cooking something and you want to, you know, just say you're doing shrimp and grits and you got them done, you've got the fire off and you just want to keep them warm and you want to close the lid to hold the heat in, you really can't do it in this setup. So, that was one of the reasons I come up with the hinge. Because with my hinge system, you're simply going to pull the pin. You'll notice when you get the hinge, it has two slots cut in it. The top one is for the matador, the bottom one is for the rotisserie. So you're gonna slide the bottom hinge in to that cutout, just like that. You're gonna put the pin in it, just like that. Put the cotter key back on the end. Set your lid back on the pot. Put your pin through my hinge, just like that. And now you can use the factory lid with the high lift hinge system. And now when you want to keep your products warm, when you close it, it hits right against the top of the pot, holds all the heat in this, and you don't have to worry about an external lid. You don't have to worry about holding the lid in one hand while you're whipping something. You simply open it, season it, do whatever you're gonna do, close the lid back up. Now let's say you want to put the rotisserie on. Pull the pan, just set the lid to the side, remove Rectex Matador pot, pull the pin, raise it up to the second cutout, put the pin back in, set the rotisserie in your bowl box, just like that. Set the lid right back on. Put your pin through the new hinge. Just like that. Now you have the factory lid on the high lift hinge and now you can run the rotisserie and you don't have to worry about your lid. You don't have to worry about an external lid that you have to take off and hold. You still have everything back the way you always wanted it. And say you're done with that, you've taken your bird off, you've enjoyed it, you went out the next day, you decided you're going to cover your grill back up, you don't want the rotisserie on there anymore, you want to go back to stock, pull the pin, set the lid to the side, remove your rotisserie, remove the pin, set the lid back on it, put the pin back 
chain back in it. Put the cotter key in and you are now back to working the way it was designed to work. Really, there's no simpler way in the world to take the bullseye and go from the matador to the rotisserie and back to stock in less than 30 seconds. I mean, you saw how quick that was. Now, I had a blast designing this and making it. It is so versatile. I wanted something that you guys could really get the full benefit of what the bullseye can actually do. This thing is an absolute beast. It heats up extremely fast. It gets to unbelievably 750 degrees. And if you're running Rectech sear grates on this thing, I mean, steaks, hamburgers, you name it, this thing can handle it. This is a must have for every outdoor. And this hinge just takes it all the way to the next level. Okay, so let's say you already own the rotisserie and you want to know if by chance this hinge will actually work with your rotisserie. What you're going to need to do is remove your lid, put your rotisserie on the bullseye, set your lid back on top of your rotisserie, and then you're going to need to measure from the bottom of the factory hinge to the bottom of the top hole in your hinge on your lid. All right? So if you put a tape measure on the bottom of the bracket and measure to the top hinge, if you measure to the bottom of the hole and it is six and three eighths inches, okay, give or take a sixteenth, then the hinge will work. Okay? Other than that, this video has already been way too long. I just wanted to try to get the information out there to let people that didn't know what the hinge was, see what it was, see how it worked, and see just how quick and easy you could go from the matador to the rotisserie and back to factory. All right, thank you guys again so much. God bless you, and as always, smoke like the rest, but roll with the best. I'll see you on our next build, my friends.